Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now we've got a lot to do and a lot to talk about today, but I've hit the first challenge already, which is this stream. But I've somehow got to get across it. It's really deep though. I'm going to be up to my knees if I just walk through it at any spot. It's pretty fast running as well, so I think one wrong move and I'm going to be stacking it straight into the water. I'm just going to have to do it. I don't particularly want wet feet right at the start of the walk though. Right, here we go. Let's uh, film it. Oh, the rocks are slippery. I'm wet already. There we go. See if we can find the path now. Scare some sheep off. But I'm across. I don't quite know where the path is though. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. All right, up we go. I'm set up for my first shot and I've just discovered my second problem of the day, which is uh, my battery has just run out. I'm normally really well prepared with batteries, but today I decided I'm only gonna come out with two because I thought that would be enough. Normally I have three and then the first one just died already because I hadn't charged it. So uh, I don't know what's going on there. I will put the uh, this fresh one in and hopefully not have to worry about it too much. If this is fully charged, which it looks like it is. But what I wanted to talk about today was the concept of heroes, because I think it's very interesting and I think it applies to photography and particularly certain photographs. And you'll know what I mean. You'll know that one image in your portfolio that's just an absolute banger, that hero image that everybody likes. However, and this is true with everything to do with heroes, it's a bit of a strange concept because it can, in a way, it can be damaging because if we always are searching for that image, there's a very big chance we're gonna miss out on a lot of other things. Good photos that otherwise you wouldn't have found. And with photography, and particularly with landscape photography, I think it's important to come and just explore with no expectations whatsoever. I've never been here before today. It's in the Peak District, obviously I've been here before, but not to this particular spot. And my plan is to go up there. And as I was walking up, I thought I'd come up to this little, small little moor before I have to do the sort of second leg up there and just came across this scene that's just in front of me here. I really love the intersecting lines of the hills. There's two things that sort of jump to mind. One is an artistic element of the lines. So the lines kind of going through the scene there are really very interesting. They're intersecting. And what that does is provide a kind of layered image, which gives you a nice sense of depth. The light's pretty flat, but I think that's gonna work for the scene as well because it lets those layers do the talking, essentially. It's also gonna be one of those photos that's not gonna be a hero shot, but it's gonna be very worthwhile. It's gonna be fulfilling. And I know I'm gonna be happy with it. I'm at F11, 1 15th of a second, ISO 100 and I'm, I'm zoomed fairly well in, maybe about 60 millimeters there. Let's oh, switch hands and take a quick look at that. Just, yeah, that's really working for me. It's gonna have a moody, dramatic edit to it as well to bring out that moody feeling we've got now. It's supposed to brighten up later on. I'm hoping for a nice sunset. Doesn't really feel like that's gonna happen at the moment. A few hours to go yet, uh -huh. but I am excited for the rest of this shoot. I've just stopped briefly before I do the last little bit to the top. The excuse is that I need 
a time lapse, but talking about the concept of heroes, it applies obviously, most obviously, to people as well. Now, do you remember Paul G. Johnson? He's my hero. <laughs> I've not seen him for a while though, and I don't think he's been seen on YouTube for some time. I hope he's doing okay. But one time we were out together in the Lake District and kind of sharing a little bit of my anxiety with him. I sort of said this, people at the top echelon of landscape photography, people like Charlie Waite, would never really want anything to do with me. Some kid who went to a hey, school in working class red car and would maybe not have so much in common with those types of people. But strangely, later that day, probably about half an hour later in fact, I got an email from the managing director of Light and Land asking me to come to London to meet Charlie Waite because they wanted to work with me, which I ended up doing then for a few years, although I don't do tours anymore. But that was mind-blowing. Going down to London and meeting him, I was meeting one of my heroes and he turned out just to be a really genuine guy. When I first started working with him, they wanted me to go and along and to go on one of the tours that the other leaders were running. So I kind of said that the tour that Joe Cornish was leading would be a good one because he'd been a hero of mine for so long, since I was young, because he's very famous for photographing the area where I grew up. I went down to the Peak District, where I am now in fact, and sort of invited myself along on his recce, <laughs> which felt a bit cheeky at the time, and probably probably was, but he was very gracious, very welcoming. We parked up and he sort of looked at me and said, uh, just so you know, I move fairly fast around the hill. <laughs> and I'll never forget that because it made me super nervous. And to be honest, I've struggled with fitness over the years since I injured my back, but uh, <laughs> Being about 25 years older than me, I thought there's no way I can show any sign of weakness here. So I powered it up the hill behind him and just about made it. <laughs> but I think elevating anyone to that kind of level doesn't do anyone justice. It doesn't do anything good for you. And it certainly doesn't do anything good for them because they are just a person. And if you meet your heroes and they're great, it's probably just because they're a good person. If you meet your heroes and they're a complete cock, it's probably because they're just generally a complete cock. But in my case, everyone that I've met in photography who I've looked up to has just been so gracious and so generous with their time and supporting, and I just love it. But I have to think back to that occasion, particularly recently, in that being fit, and being able to hike up that mountain without too much trouble is an important part of being good at landscape photography, at least if you want to go exploring anyway. And that's certainly the type of landscape photography I, I like doing. So I've been working hard on my fitness recently. I'm still struggling because of my back, but I'm just about keeping it going. I've lost now over two stone, which I'm feeling good about. Getting up here has been a little bit easier, but the mental boost that that's given me is really powerful. I'm determined to do it. I'm determined to do it because it's going to make me better at my job and better at landscape photography because there have been times in the past where I've not gone and done that extra little bit of exploring just up the top of there because my back's hurting or I'm not fit enough and I'm tired and I just want to go home because I'm mentally and physically defeated. Did I just say it was getting easier? Oh, there's absolutely nothing about this that's easy. Oh, the 20 kilos on your back just makes it so much harder as well. But I do love these rocks that are welcoming me at the top. I just need to navigate my way through them without falling and then I'll be at the top. Oh no, it's a false summit. <laughs> I've been walking along the top for a little while now and I've hit that catch 22 moment. What I would like to do is go over to that ridge right in the distance there and see the view beyond that. That was the plan today, but I've been enjoying it too much and taking my time. And I think I've run out of time to get over there, see that view, do something with it 
and then get back to where I got to the top because I found a really nice composition over there when I got to the top which I think is going to be my sunset shot the sun is going to be in a really good place for it I think and we now have see that some beautiful blue skies but yeah I think I'm going to head back towards the light just let the light guide me but as you know this video is sponsored by Squarespace now in my opinion Squarespace is just the best place for photographers to build a website and the reason for that is it's just so easy to do all you need to do is load up one of their beautiful templates put a bit of your text and a load of your best images on there and before you know it you will have a unique and beautiful looking website i think squarespace just looks great as well and it's a way better place to show off your best pictures than on social media you get to control how good the images look you get to control the flow and and then it will grow with you you can just start off with a simple gallery and then grow it into an online store where you can start selling things like books or prints or cards or calendars you can even start a members section squarespace now has that built in and makes it really really easy i've been using them for many many years and i've never looked back so go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today and then if you like what you've created use the offer code firstman to get 10 percent off your first purchase <laughs> ah and just two seconds later the sun bursts from behind the cloud look at that oh that's so nice that finally got that spring sun on my face oh that's so nice and such a positive boost for the end of the day all these rock formations just come alive when the sun is on them i'm excited i'm excited about it now normally when i make these videos i follow the same workflow because it's difficult there's video to do there's photography there's the planning of the walk navigating everything it is an awful lot but by following this workflow that I've developed over the years through constant repetition it works out all right normally what I do is set the camera up and take a photograph first it's always photography first just to be sure I've got something in the can the image you end up seeing is often the one you actually see me taking but I've usually already got one just so I don't miss that moment and that's just what happened as the light has then suddenly changed because the clouds coming over in massive banks very quickly and I didn't have time to film any footage or talk through it or actually get the shot I wanted because these rocks that I'm sat on at the moment were bathed in gorgeous warm light but the background there was really dark and moody and I think that's an occasion when front lit landscape photography works really well it's that contrast between the bright front lit subject and that darkened beautiful background and I under expose the image on purpose to make the rocks a little bit darker and to make the background even darker to just to set that contrast off so so much the camera is on the tripod there photographing the rocks that we're now sat on i think it's a nice image anyway but i then put the wide angle lens on i think that was a better composition if i'm honest i'm hoping the light's going to come back but at the moment i'm not sure i am going to wait a while i've got a little bit of time Still waiting the light is not there at the moment big bank of cloud all the way across <sighs> not sure it's gonna happen it's also got cold so coat on gloves on even though it is the middle of april i'm ready for some warm spring weather i thought that's what i was going to get today so i'm currently feeling a little bit disappointed but if i peek around that rock there still is a little little band of hope <laughs> just above the horizon where the sun could get through but I don't know I reckon it's 50-50 
I'm ready for the image. I'm ready for the shot, if it happens. But whilst I've been sitting here, it's given me some time to think. And I got contacted the other day by a veteran who had served in Iraq in 2003 and had suffered terrible PTSD and still does and tried to commit suicide several times. He'd found my videos and they'd inspired him and encouraged him to continue doing photography. And he said that photography has basically saved him because he can go out, get that exercise, be creative. And it's one of the only times he can forget the trauma that he witnessed and that he suffered. It's brought him back from the precipice. They are the real heroes. Yes, veterans, but also people that struggle day in, day out with genuine trauma. People that show courage and bravery in the face of really difficult things and things that cause a lot of fear. People that can overcome the odds and survive and press on and keep going and show that resilience. They've served their country. They've served their community. They're, they're the people that are quiet about it. They're the real heroes. They're not the ones making a big song and dance about it. And those people inspire me. But we can't all be like that, can we? We've just got to get on with our own lives. And that's the thing as well. I think you've got to be the hero in your own story. And for me, tonight, on this edge, looking at where the sun is, somewhere behind that cloud, I feel very grateful for being able to do this. The power of photography, it is absolutely inspiring, even on days when it doesn't quite work out. Anyway, I'll see you again very soon. Bye.